Father God, for the things that you are about to do. We thank you, Adonai, for being the creator over all, Father. Thank you for keeping us safe from this virus, Father God. Thank you for providing for each and every one of us. 
Father God, we thank you right now as we go forth, Father God, that will, you will do what you do best, which is being God Almighty. In the name of Yeshua. As for the speaker, as they go forth and speak today, Adonai, I ask, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, that you decrease them, Father God, and that you increase. Let your words go forth, Father God, that healing might take place in the name of Jesus, and it is so and shall not be otherwise. Amen. Welcome to Second Baptist Church, where we love God, serve people, and present Jesus. You're invited into a place where God can be himself. And because you're here with us, streaming online we ask that you if this is your first time streaming please enter your first name second baptist friends and family please go ahead and find these names and we will welcome you the second baptist way in the name of jesus amen good morning second baptist church family and friends it is a great day to serve the lord hallelujah we know that he is great and mighty. Yes, he is. Come on and put your hands together with us. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Oh, great and mighty. Great and mighty. Great and mighty is our God. Sing with me, yeah. 
to God and we bless him. Glory to God. Hallelujah for he's our God. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the air.
Contributed gifts to Pastor and Sister Webb. We are so grateful for your generosity, your your love that you showed to them last week, and uh, I believe they were appreciative of that. So thank you so much for joining us in celebrating Webb Legacy Day. Today, today we have a special treat. We have a special treat, and uh, we're going to have one of our ministers in training preach on this morning. She's no stranger to us. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she just finished singing. So, hey man, I was looking at her, I was like, you gonna go get your stuff? You keep on singing. <laughs> hey man, but this morning we are blessed to be brought the word of God by Minister Dana Taylor. Let us go ahead and celebrate God as she comes. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I don't know about you, but I am glad and I'm rejoicing in it. We just thank God for another opportunity to minister to his people. I thank God for a pastor allowing me this time to minister to you, and I know that God has a word for us on this morning. I know that he does, and I'm excited about what he is saying. We're just going to um, take a few minutes and pray, and we're going to get right in it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time. Father, I pray that your will be done. Father, let my mouth speak your words in the name of Jesus. I hide myself in you, and we thank you. God, let those that hear God have ears to receive God. Their hearts will be open to what it is you're saying, and we bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For our scripture, our opening scripture on today is coming from Philippians, the third chapter. We're going to read verses 13 and 14 in the King James Version. It is a very familiar passage. Amen. Amen. And it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And for a title we're going to use on today, I'm over it. Hallelujah. I'm over it. Many of you who know me know that earlier this year in February, I traveled to Japan and I was going there with my best friend. We were going to see my daughter perform on the ship. It was her last contract and I was excited to be getting out of the country. And we got there only for COVID to stick his ugly head up. 
And so we got there and they told us, well, the, the cruise is canceled. That was, that was the first thing that kind of upset me, had me, no, I'm not, not kind of upset, I was upset. I came all the way to, got all the way to Japan only to find out I gotta turn around and come back home. You know, and that was, that was when we were just starting to hear about COVID. So I wasn't really excited when I saw people, you know, in Japan with masks on because that's normal for them. And it really, you know, hadn't hit as, as, as it would. But a few months later, I went to go see my parents. You know, and at the airport, they told you, hey, masks are mandatory. And even on the plane, they let us know, if you won't wear a mask on our next stop, we're going to let you off. And you won't be flying this, this airline again. All right, all right. So they were very serious about it. And, you know, and so it was okay. You know, you didn't have food service. You know, they handed you a little bag when you got on the plane. It had some water and some little things in it, but it wasn't any, you know, oh, I want a Coke. Oh, I like this and that. No, they, there was none of that. And even while we were on the plane, they made sure that people kept their mask on. So they told us social distance as you can, but on a plane, that's kind of hard. So masks were definitely required. Now, what really got me is that I was excited. I hadn't seen my parents in a few years, and I was excited about seeing them. I got off the plane, you know, on the curbside, waiting for them to come and pick me up. And when they got there, I stopped. I was like, oh. Can I hug them? You know, oh, I have to, I can't even kiss my parents. I can't hug them like I want. It was so awkward. It really made me angry because I'm like, I haven't seen my parents in a few years. And now I see them and I'm not sure if I should, you know, hug him, if I can have that close contact. And at that point, at that point, I was done. And I said, I'm over it. This was me with an attitude. I was over it. I'm sick of, let me, let me say it. I'm going to say it like, like, like my dear deacon says, Covada. He gave it a name. I was so sick of it interfering in my life. It made me say, I'm over it. And, you know, and for some of us, it may not be COVID that caused you to say I'm over it, but it may be your job where that supervisor is taking credit for the work that you did and you're angry and you're saying I'm over it. It may be that loved one who decided they just gonna flip the script and move out and start doing some crazy things and they detach themselves from the family. They just gonna live life the way they wanna live and even though they're at risk, they don't care but us as their loved ones are saying, what is going on? I'm over it, hallelujah. And then it may be this social justice issue that is still going on in this United States. And you know, and, and we, didn't, we can't really, we feel like we can't do anything about it and we're marching. And everything that's going on, we still are looking at people dying and we say, I'm over it. And for some of us, it was, we lost loved ones during this time. And we were unable to memorialize them the way we do. You know, we come together as family. We console one another, but we just couldn't do it because of what's happening. Those are some of the things that make you say, what's, oh, I'm over it. I'm over it. And if that's you out there, if you've got something going on in your life, type in, I'm over it. Some things that just make you say, I'm done. I'm over it. I'm tired. I'm tired of being angry. I'm tired of being frustrated. Now, here's the deal. It's okay to feel that way, but you can't stay in that place. You can't stay there too long because, you know, when our minds get to going, we begin formulating a plan. Okay, well, I'm over it, and okay, so I'm going to fix this myself. And we come up with a plan, and sometimes it's even those thoughts of revenge that come into our minds, and we're like, I'm going to get back at them. So all of a sudden, we're thinking and coming up with an action that may cause us harm in the long run, that is going to cause us to be sad in the long run, that may cause us our jobs or our positions in the long run. So what I'm telling you is, is even though you feel that way, you got to know you can't stay that way. You know, I said, my, my word is got a story. 
I can make it into a country song. Y'all know we can sing some songs with some sad things going on, but that is not where we want to be. And just like bitterness can take root and grow like a weed overtaking your heart and your mind, the same is true, believe it or not, about your past. Uh-huh. We, we, it's, it's gone farther than COVID. Some of us are looking at our past and we're saying, God, I didn't do some of the things that I wanted to do. I didn't I take, take advantage of some of the opportunities that were afforded to me. You're thinking of past, about your past. You're saying, gosh, I spoke some harsh words. I knew I hurt some people. And you begin to just, you're thinking about those things and you're thinking and all of a sudden you think about maybe that friendship that you lost because of, of misunderstanding or even pride. Those things that get in the way. And when we begin to, d d to dwell on those things, the fiery darts of the e enemy just start coming. They start coming and we find ourselves in a place of depression. We find ourselves in a place of despair and we're just not sure what to do. And if we're not careful, we'll drown out the comfort of the Holy Spirit. See, those of us who know Christ and have Christ in our lives, the Holy Spirit is always speaking. It's just that sometimes we're not listening. Sometimes we get to the point where, you know, when we really don't want to hear him, we, we try to tune him out. But he comes to our aid. And when he comes to our aid, he begins to speak to us. And he may something, say something like what Psalms 139 and 14. It says, I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. Um, it simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. That is an encouragement. That's something that ought to make you sit back and say, God loves me. Or maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking Isaiah 26 and 3 to you, which says, you will keep in perfect peace whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. God will keep us in perfect peace, but we just got to be listening. We've got to be open to what the Spirit of God is saying. Or the Holy Spirit may be saying in Psalms, like in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you with which path to take. The Holy Spirit is right there, right there. And he's saying, trust me, trust. God is saying, trust me. And trust is the key. When we trust, we have confidence in God. It doesn't mean that frustrations won't come. It doesn't mean that situations won't arise. But what it means is we don't have to get out of sorts. We don't have to be out of control because we know that God's God, us. God is holding us in his arms. And we've just got to be able to rest in that. We've got to know that my way is not the best way. My will is not where it's at. I, God, I want what you want. So I trust you with my life. I trust you with my thoughts. I trust you, God, because I know, God, that everything will turn out all right. So with that being said, all that energy that we use to be angry and frustrated, what if we turned that around and applied it to our past? What if we turned around and applied it to our past and say, I'm over it? When the enemy comes to remind you about who you are and what you did and what you didn't do, what if we took all of that energy that we expend and say, you know what? I'm over it. You're not going to throw this back in my face again. I'm over it. Some of you may say when Paul was writing this, you may not know it, but Paul was an anointed apostle. And he wrote more books in the New Testament than anyone. And I agree with that. We know that about Paul, but Paul had a past. Now, we know about him being the educator. We know about him being the mighty man of God. But before Paul was Paul, he was Saul. 
And Saul was educated. He was, you know, a Jew among, above, amongst Jews. He knew the law and he was trained in the law. And Paul, Saul, thought that Christians were heretics. Saul was like, you know what? Y'all crazy. And we killing all of y'all. That's what he was doing. He was going to kill Christians because he thought and he felt like they were not staying in the traditional ways. They were teaching and preaching something that was outside of what they would, should be doing. But one day on Damascus Road, Saul had an encounter with God that would forever change his life. And it caused him to turn around. It caused him to do a 180 yeah. when he understood who God was. And in this case, as we read these scriptures, Paul was writing to the Philippians and he loved the Philippians. The Philippians had sent a gift to him. They were supporting him. And he wrote a love letter of, of encouragement to the church at Philippi. Yeah. And he was thanking them. Thank you for the gift. And as he encouraged them, he was um, telling them, if you look back at verse one, he was telling them to rejoice in the Lord. He was encouraging them and letting them know that, you know what? What you know doesn't mean anything. He wanted them to understand your prestige, your position doesn't mean anything. And he talked about, he said, you know what? If you want to do that, if you want to go there, he, I got credentials. I have pedigree. And he began to tell them, you know, about who he was and who, he, who his father was, who his family was, and how he was brought up and how he knew the law and how he knew the word of God. But he said, I, mm, I counted his tongue. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't. None of that matters. I'll give it all away for the sake of Christ. That's what he was encouraging them. He was letting them know, I'll give it away. And again, he went, you know, when you look back at his brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And we know when he was speaking, he was talking about forgetting those things, that, that education he had, forgetting the titles that he had. It doesn't matter because he was pressing toward the mark. Paul was telling him, I haven't reached my goal. I'm not there. No matter what I know, no matter where I've been, I haven't reached the goal of being all that God has called me to be. But I'm going hard after it. Now, in order to do this, I got to forget the things that are behind me. I can't be influenced by it. I can't be affected by what's behind me. And I've got to reach ahead. And I like what he said because he said, I got to press. In other words, it's going to take some work. It doesn't come easy. But I'm going to press toward the mark. And when you think about it, when you try to put this in perspective for some people, if you think about um, driving a car, All right. you, you're driving a car. Now, when you're driving, you're looking ahead. You've got mirrors that you check every now and then, but you're supposed to be looking ahead. Now, can you imagine being in the car with someone and you're having conversation and they're turning around and they're talking to you and they got their head turned back and they just messing around and you sitting there like, what are you doing? And all the time, you know, we're still moving forward. You can't see what's ahead. You can't go, you, you know, you, you, you're at a standstill. And you as a, as, a, as a passenger in that car would be freaking out. I don't want to be in the car with someone who's not paying attention, who's not moving forward. But we've got to think about that. What are we doing when God has called us and we are looking behind? What are we saying to God when we're not moving forward into the gifts and the things that he's given us to do? What's happening What's happening when he's calling us to pray, but we're too, bad, we're too busy looking back saying, but God, I messed up yesterday. But God, I lived a life that wasn't worthy, but God. And what people don't realize is all of us have a past. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. 
some a little seedier than others, but we all have a past. And what you've got to know is sin is sin. I don't care what you're doing. Sin is sin. So whether you murdered someone or whether you told a lie, sin is sin. Now, there are different consequences, but it's sin. And when we look back at our past, we allow those things to be and act as if the blood of Jesus was of no effect. We act like his blood was of no effect. He died for us so that we could be cleansed, so that we can move forward in him. No matter what we did in the past, good or bad, we can't change it. So let's not let it hinder our walk with God, our walk with Christ. Don't let us not let it sabotage the blessings that God has for us. When we dwell on our past, we convince ourselves that we're not good enough. We're not worthy of what God has in store for us. We're dealing with what we see as sordid, shameful, and perverted. But I came to tell you that your past is just that. It's your past. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't change it. You can't go back and rework it. So why are we beating ourselves up with regrets? Why are we beating ourselves up and not moving? Why are we letting it paralyze us? It's done. It can't hurt us anymore. It's done. What we can learn, what we can do is learn from our past. We can't change it, but I can learn from it. Well, I won't do that again. Well, oh, I won't say that again. You know, well, you know, maybe I'll step back from this for a minute and pray. You know, there are some things that we can do to help ourselves along. God told us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So we want our testimony to be something to use to empower others. We want his grace and mercy to be over what we went through. So we use that past. You know, some people don't understand. You know, they look at you today and they say, wow, she's got it all together. Wow, he's a mighty man of God. Wow, they've got that anointing and they just flow. Wow, look at them. They got a great job. Look, but they have no idea. And it's up to us as people of God. We can't be ashamed to give our testimonies. And no, people don't need to know every bit, every detail. But what they do know, they need to know that God is able. They need to know that God can change a life. They need to know that God can pick you up and turn you around. They need to know that God can change your mindset. He can change everything about you if you will let him. So when the enemy comes to torment you, When he comes to buffet you about your past, when he comes to accuse you, you can put on the armor of God and stand and look at him and say, yes, I did it, but I'm over it. Yes, I said it, but I'm over it. Yes, I was that, but I'm over it. Yes, I disappointed them, but I'm over it. Yes, I messed up. Did I? Yes, I did. I messed up, but I'm over it. Why? Why? Because I have a Savior who died on the cross for me. Hallelujah for every one of my sins. Why? Because I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. Why? Because the same Jesus who rode on the third day with all power in his hand has given me power. Hallelujah. Why? Because when I, pres- when I repented and invited Christ into my life, he wiped, wiped the slate clean. Why? Because there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because God's plan for me is abundant life. I'm over it because whom the Son sets free, hallelujah, is free indeed. I'm over it, yes, because I am the righteousness of God. I'm over it because I was fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm over it because I am a son of God. I'm over it because I'm pursuing the goal that God has in mind for me. I'm 
over it. Don't remind me of my past because when you come at me about my past, I'm going to talk to you about my future. And my future is in Christ. My future is blessings. My future is walking in the way that he would have me to walk. I'm over it. And because we are children of God, because we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ, we need to remind ourselves that all things work together. All things work together for the good of him who loves God and are called according to his purpose. Yeah, that was my past, but watch God working for my good. We can't see how he's going to do it. We can't trace him, but he's working it out for our good. We're saying, God, but I was a thief. Oh, it's all right. When you give your life to Christ, he'll work it out for your good. And when I made a mistake and I hurt someone, and it seemed like my life is being turned around, we, it's okay. I got to remember that the word of God says all things work together for the good of them who love God. See, that's key right there. It's not just for everyone, but for those of us who love God and are called according to his purpose, all things are working out for our good. So I press towards the mark, that life of obedience, that life of prayer, that life of faithfulness for the prize of the high calling, which is eternal life with Christ. So right now, wherever you are, just stop for a minute and repeat after me. I declare and I decree my past has no authority over me. I walk in liberty because Christ has made me free. I'm over it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm over it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're over it, just give God a praise. When you look at your past and say, no more, not now, not again, not ever, no more, I'm over it. Hallelujah, I am a son of God. I am, hallelujah, his daughter. I'm precious in his sight. Hallelujah, I'm over it. I don't have to be depressed. I don't have to be defeated. I don't have to look back and wonder. I'm over it. I belong to the most high God. He has made me free. And whom the son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. So instead of being frustrated, instead of being mad and saying I'm over it, I can say I'm over it and I'm happy about it. I'm over it and I've got joy. I'm over it. Hallelujah. And I can give God a praise because of what he has done. Hallelujah. In my life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Ooh. You ought to type it right now. I'm over it. 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 Hallelujah. I'm over it. I'm going to have to preach that. I can't preach it here, but I can preach it elsewhere. Because she said something. She said, yes. She said, that was my past. But watch him working for my good. Well, I'm going to preach that. Just watch him working. Yes. You know, as, as I talk with many of our congregants, whether it's, you know, through Zoom or conference call or uh, if we're meeting in person, socially distant, many people are saying the same thing. Pastor, I have this past that I can't get over. I have a past. If you knew who I was, if you knew where I came from, why would God choose me? Why would God love me? Why would God call me? And let me just say this, that a lot of times we spend so much time trying to analyzing why God called us and chose us instead of appreciating that he called us, that he chose us. If you look through all 66 books, interesting because right now I'm, I'm studying what's called call narratives. Basically it's a fancy word for just stories of people who had calls from God. Moses and Gideon, two examples that come right to mind. And you 
you'll see that everybody that God called to greatness in Scripture had a past. Whether it was murder or whether it was or whether it was low self-esteem, whether it's being the least or the weakest of the tribe. What you have to see is all of them questioned why God would call them. But there is a point in their stories, in their narratives, where they stopped questioning why God called them and moved into the call of God. And so today I want you just to be encouraged. You're not alone. You're in good company. Because all of us, at one point in time, we're trying to figure out why in the world God would call us. Many times I ask God, why would you call me? But as I talked with a group of young people over the summer, I pointed out to them that in Jeremiah, it said, before I called you, I knew you. And before thou camest forth out the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. When you look at that phrase, before I called you, I knew you, it means that he knew you intimately. He knew Jeremiah intimately, meaning that not only did he know Jeremiah's successes, but he also knew his failures and he knew his proclivities. And even after all that, he still decided to make them. <laughs> and that's what I want to tell you on today, that God, y'all are tripping over what God has already given you grace to get through. Y'all are all, you are tripping over what God has given you the grace to get through before God formed you, he knew you. He knew every intricate detail about you. And even after knowing every intricate detail about you, he still decided to make you. That's a good place to praise him right there. You ought to type in God, thank you for knowing me. And thank you for continuing to make me. If that word touched you on today, I just want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're thankful and grateful for this opportunity that we have on today. Thank you that you have told us that we have an opportunity to move forward. That just like Paul had a past, as he was persecuting Christians, he thought he was doing the right thing, but you arrested him on the road to Damascus. Father, just like that experience, Father, arrest us. Help us to have an arresting experience with you so that our faith is solidified moving forward, so that we never ever question another thing in our lives concerning our walk with you. We may question certain things, but Father, solidify our faith in you. Father, we're over it. <laughs> we're over it. And so Father, the question we must ask ourselves is if we're over it, then what's the next action? The action in the text tells us that we are to press towards the mark. Forgetting those things which are behind us and reaching, the text says, straining forward to those things which are ahead. We press. So, Father, help us to move the things away from us that are not like you or that would hinder us from moving forward and help us to reach forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Minister Dana, for preaching that word on today. I tell you, she came to preach. She came to preach on today. If you, um, you say, Pastor Deshaun, I've heard about Jesus, I've heard him sung about, I've heard him preached about, I've heard him taught about, but I've never stopped to ask him into my life. And what we call that is being saved. Being saved is being rescued from sin and its consequences. And if you like an opportunity to be saved on today, we invite you just to, just repeat after me. Say, God, I admit that I need some help and that help is found in your son, Jesus. I believe that Jesus is the son of God that he died for my sins, that he rose on the third day, and that he's not only coming back to me, but is coming back for me. And at this moment, I give him everything. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, we believe, according to Romans 10 and 9, that you are saved. And so we're excited for that. We'd love to connect with you. Um, if you recently saved, we want to hear about your journey with Christ. Well, again, we want to connect with you. Or if you need prayer, you say, Pastor Deshaun, I need prayer. I need somebody to touch and agree with. We invite you to call us at 775-786-1017. Again, 775-786-1017. Well, this week is Thanksgiving. It is Thanksgiving. So there's going to be some good eating, some good cooking, and we praise God for that. Now, let me say this, that we do know that
that numbers are on the rise with COVID. And so we want you to be safe, be safe. Don't go out if you don't have to go. Certainly be with your family, uh, but what we are seeing is that people are being more careless these days. And as I sat with uh, the task force, I'm on, a, I'm on a, a special task force with renowned medical center, and they were saying that people are getting, um, are becoming infected because they're in social gatherings and they're not wearing masks, they're not you know, practicing social distance, okay? And so let me just say this, that the reason why the governor didn't shut everything down right away is because he said, if we all do what we're supposed to do, we could really create a downward trend. But I can't tell you how many times I've gone somewhere and there are people that act as if though Covada, that's what we say, Covada was never around. I'm like, where's your mask? You know, you're out here, you're doing everything. And so please, it's very real. I happened to see last night, I was watching YouTube, and there was, um, uh, there was a guy, he was a, he's a famous, uh, he's on social media, I don't know his name, but he's on social media, he's out of Russia. And he was telling people at the beginning of the pandemic that COVID was not real. Well, unfortunately, he lost his life to the virus that he said was not real. He didn't take the necessary precautions. And I don't want that to be any of you. So I'm gonna say this to you, like I'm gonna repeat uh, the lyrics to the song back in the day, it's better to have and not need than to need and not have. <laughs> the Lord in your life. It's better to have and not need than to need and not have a mask. Amen. I'm preaching good already. You better type in wear your mask. And you better type in where is your mask. Hallelujah. So please, please ma'am, please sir, please wear your mask. And here's the reason why we want you to do that is because those, those health precautionary uh, thing, those health precautions that have been put in place by the CDC are the same health precautions that we have in place here. So when we come back into, into worship in this space, in this physical space, those are the things that we are going to be doing. So please, if you want to come back into this space, this physical space, start doing those practices now. Please do those practices now. I want to see you. I want to see you eyeball to eyeball. So be safe. Be safe this week. Um, please make good and wise decisions. Um, some some data is even saying, even with your, with your family, as you're sitting around, wear your mask. All right. Pull the mask down to eat the fried corn that my mama gonna make. I don't know if that's on the menu. Oh, it's not on the menu because I'm making corn pudding this year, so it's not on the menu. Pull the mask down while you eat the corn pudding. Glory to God. But be safe. Be safe. Make wise decisions. And again, if you don't have to be out, don't be out. That's this it. All right. I want to say thank you again for those of you that are continuing to give. Because of your faithful contribution, uh, we have been able to do ministry in and outside of the church. And so thank you. Thank you for those of you that did attend our church business meeting on Zoom this past Tuesday night, 7 p.m. And thank you so much to uh, those leaders who are from our trustees team, our deacon team who gave the reports and let us know where we are. Thank you so much for that. All right. If you want to continue to give, uh, we have multiple ways how you can give. You can either mail or drop your uh, your gift off here during the week, 1265 Montello Street, Reno, Nevada, 89512. Or you can go to www.secondbaptistreno.org and click donate. You can also give through, di through a digital way, through your phone, by texting SBC Reno Give in all capitals to 77977. Again, SBC Reno Give to the number 77977. If you haven't downloaded our app, we invite you to download the app as well. You can have the word in your pocket. And by, by just text SBC Reno app to the number 77977. Or if you don't want to do that, whatever platform you're on, whether it's Android, go to Google Play Store, or if you're on the Apple platform, go to Apple Store and look for a Second Baptist Church, Reno. Well, again, this is Thanksgiving and we thank God. Amen. As Heavy D said on Living Single, he said, we give thanks for giving. So, amen. Y'all see what I do on my spare time sometimes. Amen. Second Baptist, I love you. It has been a year. It has been a year. We're almost at the end of... Uh, we're almost at the end of November and we'll be moving into December. So continue to keep 
us in prayer. Lastly, um, again, just to remind those of you that would like to give, we're going to do another uh, we're going to do another outreach opportunity to where we go and we give people some groceries. Um, and so if you're going to if you want to be a part of that, if you're as you're giving, if you're giving digitally or you're giving um, through whatever method of giving in your memo area, just write uh, the gift card so that we know how to allocate that money. And we'll be doing that in the upcoming weeks. We'll let you know those of you that want to come out and help us like we did last time. We'll let you know. All right. Again, Minister Dana, thank you so much for preaching on today. Hey, man, I'm over. She was ready to preach, y'all. She was ready to preach. I told her, keep going. Keep going. I said, put on a good key. Let her hoop. <laughs> hey, man, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're thankful and grateful for this worship experience. Thank you so much for allowing us to experience your word and your presence. And, Father, as we move into this week of Thanksgiving, help us, Father, to take moments to reflect on how you have been good even in the midst of this pandemic, even in, the, even in the midst of this political unrest and social unrest. Father, we pray right now for our leaders, not just in the community, but Father, our national leaders. There are so many things going on right now in our country. Father, you still are in control and we believe you're in control. Right now, we must be honest, we don't even know what's going on. We don't even see your hand at work sometimes. But Father, as we look back over our lives, not just through scripture, but over our lives and our experiences, your track record proves that all things work together for good to those who love God and who are the called according to your purpose. And so we have to believe that even right now, that you're mixing all of this together for our good and that you have your hand in it. Father, we thank you for Second Baptist. We thank you for our family and for our friends. Help us to be safe and make wise decisions this week as we partake in Thanksgiving. And Father, I pray for those who are giving right now. Father, not only bless the gift, but bless the motive behind the gift because your word says that you love a cheerful giver. And we'll be so careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Second Baptist family and friends, love you, appreciate you, cannot wait to see you. All right, and we'll see you. We'll see you. Again, remind, rem remember, we're off on Tuesday, so we'll see you next Sunday, live at 9. And we're Second Baptist Church, and we still love God, serve people, and present Jesus. God bless you.